Hey there. So uh, I spent this past weekend in San Francisco hanging out with uh, some of the Vulcan kids and some of the other uh, Poi spinners from uh, around the country and actually around the world uh, for the Temple of Poi uh, Fire Dancing Expo as part of National Dance Week in San Francisco, which I'll have footage of up hopefully later on this week. But in the meantime, I ran across a really cool idea uh, in the course of chatting with people out there that uh, I wanted to share in a little mini blog such as this. So, here goes. Um, so, if you, like me, enjoy playing around with, uh, with anti-spin flowers, more than likely you're familiar with this shape. This is the diamond configuration of uh, spinning poi. Uh, if you do most anti-spin flowers, they conform to this. There would be a petal here, a petal here, a petal here, a petal here. It's essentially a visualization tool to uh, help you realize where your hand path is going, right? It also has a counterpart, which is the same figure rotated 45 degrees, which uh, I've been uh, referring to as box mode ever since having seen Charlie's nine square theory videos. And uh, if you've seen those videos too, you know that uh, there's a lot of funky things that are possible moving between these, but that they're kind of mutually incompatible with each other. That getting between box mode and diamond mode requires a little bit of chicanery and kind of switching around the intention of your spinning. Um, and, uh, of course, once you start playing around on the insides of them, you wind up with uh, some other funky patterns that, uh, you know, begin to approximate uh, the, uh, the properties of the neighbors, but they don't actually get you to the point of being able to switch between them. Uh, so, this past week, I came across not one, but two different ideas that get around this. Uh, the first one is from Jordan, the Vulcan crew. And I think he said he'd gotten this idea from Zan, uh, although I can't remember for sure. So Jordan, if that's the case, you can go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. But I'm crediting you for the time being. We're in we switch to an octagonally based pattern. That is, there are going to be eight points of intercept, and this lovely little cavity opens up in the middle of it. So, for example, if we go back to diamond mode and use the transits, this is, uh, th this is a shape that uh, uh, myself and others have been calling Zan's diamond after the guy who I believe created it, Zan Moore. And it looks a little something like this, right? And all that is, is you're moving between each of the corners and you're using the vertical and horizontal transit to get between all four points, right? Well, if we add this extra layer of complexity to it, it turns out to be not, not terribly much different. That is, we go from this to this and not tangling. Essentially, it looks like an exaggerated figure eight, right? Same idea, we're just stretching the points out. Other possibilities that it opens up to us are, for example, if we're playing around with our elliptical caps, and we open it up, we wind up with a pattern that looks something a little bit more like this. Right? There's also another way of ordering these points, and uh, Baz actually came up with this as a possible solution to the Carolinian cross problem. And that is this, which is oriented 45 degrees off of this pattern, right? And that comes together if we're going to keep it in split opposites, something like this.
Now, here's the kicker. These two patterns, even though they're oriented uh, 45 degrees off of each other, they're actually compatible with each other. So, as we're going through the bass pattern, we also have access to the other pattern. And what do we have to switch? Only the direction of our intention, nothing else. Yeah. So, Octagonal spinning, a new dimension. Let's play around with this one. Peace. Thanks for watching.